Hello, a very warm welcome along as always to Sports Bet TV with me, Paul Alster, here with you looking ahead to the final day of glorious Goodwood, where there is uh, some excellent action, of course. And I'm going to be tipping in three of the races at Glorious Goodwood. So that should keep you uh, interested uh, as regards the uh, terrestrial uh, televised racing and um, some excellent action ahead there. I've looked at the other meetings briefly. I'm still on holiday. Got to say, there wasn't a huge lot jumped out at me. Quite a few small fields once again. Um, but there's enough going on at Goodwood, I think, to keep us uh, happy. If you're... Um, uh, just stumbling across the channel for the first time or you've been recommended, uh, then welcome along. It is great to have you with us. Um, a tipping service here that looks at horses at each way odds, sometimes big odds, and that over the uh, seasons and the last uh, two years has produced uh, regular profits. Now, press the red button just below this screen, the subscribe button, if you want to be uh, kept informed of all my uh, views uh, and tips on the racing at the uh, weekend's and um, going forward, as well, of course, at the big festivals, I haven't tipped throughout Goodwood this week with me being on holiday. So a very quick word about last week. I tipped you four horses. Overall, we had a marginal profit, which is fine. Better than a slap in the face, as they say. And um, in particular, a big run from Northern Express, recommended at 25 to 1. He was fourth in that big sprint handicap at Ascot. He came there with every chance just at the furlong pole. Just couldn't quite see it out but he ran an absolute cracker and each way at 25 to 1 is a nice profit and we also saw profit from random harvest later on at ascot last saturday who was a rock solid third uh, at um, eight to one each way the other two horses well glenn laurel the two-year-old didn't run to his previous uh, uh, form i don't think uh, at first it maybe all, all got a little bit much for him he'll have other days an old venturous over at york Never quite got going this time. I thought he was going to come into it when switch stands side two out, but he didn't quite manage to uh, get involved. But overall, as I say, a marginal profit. So, uh, of course, we would have liked to have seen some winners and some nice big profits, but you've just got to be patient sometimes when you're tipping at this type of odds. Um, we're not going to be tipping favourites where you're going to um, strike uh, every one in three, or you should be, and if you don't, you've got something wrong. Anyway... Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more brief uh, than usual uh, because uh, I am on holiday and we've got uh, a day trip lined up. So let's get straight on with it. Take you to the 210 race at Goodwood. And this is a lovely race, a mile and three quarter handicap on this really undulating course with the camber. 14 runners and the going uh, remains a good to firm forecast. And Mark Johnston, who always does so well at Glorious Goodwood, has got Soapy Stevens, who's on a hat trick after wins at Chester and uh, at Newmarket, and he's only gone up a total of eight pounds and I think could still be very, very competitive. Now, the Gosdens have Trawler Man, and there's been money seen for this horse from about eight to one down to nine to two at the time of this recording. We're going up early on Friday morning, um, very early comparatively, before nine o'clock on Friday morning. This piece is being recorded, so the odds are correct at the time I'm uh, recording this piece. So Trawlerman, although he's disappointed in his last two starts, and on the face of it, I couldn't recommend him. Um, there appears to be some confidence from the Gosden camp. So it'll be interesting to see if that confidence is sustained into the betting markets closer to the off. Chris Wall, he's got back door, another horse on a hat-trick after wins at Newmarket and Ascot. He's only gone up five pounds, so he should also be in the mix. And the very consistent Sam Cook, trained by Rafe Beckett, Fourth beat just three quarters of a length by Sophie Stevens last time as a two pound pull. And that should bring them even closer together. And uh, a big show from Sam Cook is anticipated. And uh, the other one of uh, interest uh, here outside of my selection is Bus School uh, for Richard Hughes, who did really well at the end of last season on the old weather, rattling up a four timer. Uh, been off the course for seven months or so. And interesting to see how this horse goes, and if there is money for it, back on turf. But I'm uh, pretty sweet here on the chance of Semhan, uh, C-E-M-H-A-A-N, trained by George Baker, and the Mount of Holly Doyle. Now, this is an improving five-year-old. He's a really nice sword. He's won three of his last five races, including 
uh, his reappearance this season at Salisbury in April, where he won off 82. He then followed up in a £100,000 handicap at the Guineas meeting, stepping up to the mile and three quarters at Newmarket in early May, and that was off 87. He won with a lot of authority that day. And the particularly nice thing about it was to see a stayer with a turn of foot, because he really did quicken two out, and he put the race to bed very easily that day. Now, after that, he went up another five pounds and was last seen running in the Duke of Edinburgh handicap at Royal Ascot, where again he ran well, a seventh of 18, and he didn't get the best of runs. A couple of times he was uh, just not in the right place at the right time and didn't get the breaks. And he was, um, I think, value for being closer. He's also been given time to recover from that run at Royal Ascot. And I think that was sensible of George to give him uh, just a little bit of a break. And he brings him back here uh, to a meeting that George absolutely adores. And he's done well at. You may remember him popping up a few years ago with that 125 to 1 winner in the Maiden. And he's had others. Um, also, the nice thing about this horse, he's won a couple of times at Salisbury, which is not a totally dissimilar course uh, to Goodwood, uh, undulating uh, with the loop. And I think that augurs well for a good run. And of course, George's Yard had that very nice winner uh, at the Ascot King George meeting last weekend. So uh, they're going OK. And I'm expecting Senhar to put up a big show. At the time of this recording, early Friday morning, Eight to one offered each way, and that's for four places. But remember to shop around and uh, we'll judge the place market for how many places are offered in general by firms just before the off. But at the moment, Paddy Power and Betfair, of course, which is essentially one firm, 888 and Bet Victor are offering eight to one. So eight to one each way for me, Semhan, in the 210 race at Goodwood. And then we go on to one of the big handicaps of the season, the Stewards' Cup. Great cavalry charge. It's due off at 3.20 on Saturday at Goodwood. Six furlongs, of course. 28 runners declared. Good to firm ground. They'll be coming up over the brow of the hill after 100 yards, and then it's downhill all the way to the post. And I really don't need to say it, but I will. You're going to need um, luck in running here. And, you know, we're not quite sure where the best of the draw is going to be, but it's eight to one the field. You pay your money, you take your chance. There are lots of old favourites running here, including the first three from last year's race. Comanche Falls, Gulliver, a great ambassador. Um, and they're all respected again because in different ways, they've all done enough to suggest they might not be far away. We've also got the 2020 winner, Summergan, who I tipped when he was a very good fifth, got us the place money there. in The Wokingham handicap at Royal Ascot. He loves this course. He's rock solid if things go right for him. One of the horses in... Great form at the moment is Mr. Wagyu, trained by John Quinn in the north, who went over to Ireland for a red hot sprint handicap recently and won in style. And he's one of the eight to one joint favourites alongside a market mover. There's been an anti post market move for a horse called When the Deal is Done, and it's trained by Roger Teal. Um, 14 to one and 16 to one was available um, in uh, earlier in the market, now eight to one joint favourite. Uh, when the deal is done. So a very, very um, significant move for that. But I've decided to put two up in this race uh, because you really do need to give yourself a chance in the Stewards Cup. Now, the first of them is a horse called Popmaster, and it's trained by Ed Walker, who also trains, of course, great, great ambassador. He trained that uh, and last year as well to run so well in the race. Tom Marquand is on board, who I rate is just about... Um, one of the top three jockeys, I'd say, at the moment, riding. Uh, and this pop master has won two um, six furlong handicaps last season. Um, and he's gone very, very close in his last two runs in good company this year, beaten half a length in a hot class two handicap at Chelmsford. But then more significantly, caught only in the last 75 yards or so by Rohan in the Wokingham. Uh, he ran a wonderful race, Popmaster. He was beaten by a horse who, of course, his group class on his day, Rohan, uh, and has only gone up three pounds for finishing second in the Wokingham. So we know he likes the big fields and the hurly-burly of these races. He's drawn three. Um, hard to know if that is or isn't an advantage, but, you know, you just got to take your chance in these races. And at the time of the recording here, 12 to 1 offered each way with the best terms. 
The seven place is offered by Boyle Sports. So 12 to 1 each way, seven places. Popmaster is my first choice. And for my second choice, I'm going to stick with the horse I tipped you a couple of weeks ago called St. Lawrence, trained by Roger Varian and the Mount of Jack Mitchell. Well, there's no two ways about it. He disappointed us last uh, a fortnight ago. Uh, that was down at Newbury in a Group 3 race uh, where he just didn't um, get away very well and he was never a factor. I just think you can ignore that run. Also, it was his second run in Blinkers, having shown promise, a lot of promise, first time out in Blinkers the time before when he was six in the Group 1 King Stan Stakes. So he's going down a space of two runs from running such a blinder, staying on strongly over five furlongs in the King Stan to running here in the Six Furlong Stewards Cup Handicap that if he can reproduce the level of form he showed in the King's Stand, and they've decided to lead the blinkers off this time, and they may have felt they just put him to sleep a little bit. That's why he was slowly away. Uh, I think he still has a very good chance on the form of a couple of runs ago, and also of earlier in the season um, at uh, Newmarket. And um, I think the handicap... Um, Sphere will probably be an easy challenge, easier challenge for him. And if he gets the breaks, I can see St. Lawrence running a massive race as well. And he's offered at uh, 25 to 1 uh, each way, six places as of early Friday morning. That's with Bet365, who are the best of the bunch uh, at that particular point in time. So Popmaster, 25 to 1 each way for seven places, and 25 to 1 each way for the six places at the time of this recording with St. St. Lawrence. But remember, Friday evening into Saturday leading up to the race, the bookmakers are going to be moving the goalposts, changing the terms. So you shop around and look for the very best deal you can on either these selections or whatever you're going to uh, be rowing in with for the Stewards Cup. Well, my final selection uh, for Saturday is the final race at uh, Glorious Goodwood, final race of day five. And an earlier finish than usual, it's the Goodwood 430, a nine furlong handicap. 18 runners on good to firm. And Mark and Charlie Johnston have got Forrest Falcon, who won the Chesterfield Cup on Tuesday in really impressive fashion. And he turns out again under a five-pound penalty, despite the drop back to nine furlongs. It shouldn't inconvenience him. He's the four-to-one favourite at the time of this recording, and he's sure to give it a proper go to um, follow up. Kim Bailey... Um, has done really well on the flat with a Jero, of course, Kim known as a great national hunt trainer. And this horse has been second on all four of his flat outings, running well each time, including most recently a blinder, when second in the Duke of Edinburgh handicap at Royal Ascot, and he's only gone up two pounds. Paul and Oliver Cole have a horse called General Lee for Fitry Hay. Now, this one's unexposed, and he's having his first run since March. He did enough last season to suggest that. He might be OK this term. And so if there's any money around for this horse, General Lee, it would be very well worth noting. And the other one I thought of interest was the second of Mark Johnston's runners, Dutch Decoy. He's on a hat-trick after wins at a mile, goes up in trip, but it could even bring out some improvement for him. But I'm fancying one at a big prize here. And uh, the horse in question is called Junkanoo, uh, trained uh, down in the south by Gary Moore, and the mount of Jason Watson. Now, this is a horse um, who's got a bit of a story because he was a progressive three-year-old handicapper in 2020, um, including when he won here at Goodwood over a mile and a quarter in a handicap of 80. So we know he handles the track and we know he'll certainly stay. But he was off for 623 days. He missed all of last season um, and then wasn't seen. Uh, until three weeks ago at Ascot. So he obviously had some sort of an issue that kept him uh, out of action. Uh, but he ran three weeks ago at Ascot, and he certainly wasn't um, knocked around. He was ridden by a very inexperienced seven-pound claimer. And uh, there's no doubt at all that he's sure to have been better for the run after such a very, very long uh, break. And also, this time, the longer trip, uh, the nine and ten furlongs is his kind of optimum trip, is going to suit. So we've got him uh, with a run under his belt after a very long break. Um, we've got him stepping up in trip. And significantly for me, they've replaced the young lady uh, apprentice rider, very inexperienced, with Jason Watson this time, who knows what he's doing. And I think that in itself is a little bit of a tip. Gary Moore does really well at Goodwood. And uh, Junkanoo offered at 25 to 1 each way. 
for five places, with Bet365 again coming out on top on the early odds that are being offered um, across the firms as of around nine o'clock on Friday morning. So John Canoe, I can see running a big race at a pony. Um, so he's my final selection for you uh, for this Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be back uh, home um, for next week's bulletin, and I hope you're going to join me for that. Also, um, uh, we are going to be moving to uh, offer a premium service, which is going to be interactive, and where you'll be able to communicate with me on a live stream, and that will be up and running in the next few weeks. We'll have more to tell you about that uh, next week. But for now, from me, Paul Alster at Sportsbet, enjoy the last day of uh, Glorious Goodwood, and I hope you have plenty of luck, and I hope our selections give you a big shout. I look forward to speaking to you again same time next week. Bye-bye for now.